So we're going to talk about dispensationalism. What is dispensationalism? Dispensationalism, we believe in that doctrine because what it means is that you rightly divide verses to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. So we're going to look at Galatians chapter C3, and then we're also going to look at Romans chapter 9. Now there's a heresy called replacement theology. Replacement theology, their favorite two chapters that they will be using is Romans 9 and Galatians 3. This is like their verse that they always turn to. It's like their John 3.16. All they know are these verses to prove their doctrine. Galatians 3 and Romans 9. Now I'm going to debunk this. They're going to quote this over and over and over again. Now we believe this is that, and I'm not going to explain it on this video, but I taught you that in dispensationalism we believe that there is a spiritual nation and a physical nation. The, God's physical nation are Jews. They're a physical group of people. Whereas the church is the spiritual nation. They're the spiritual group of people. So God would refer to the Christian church as Jews because he's talking about spiritual Jews. When he's talking about the Jews, the nation of Israel, physical nation, he would call them Jews in a physical sense, not a spiritual sense. Now, replacement theology, they go bonkers on that. And then they, they go insane like a bunch of demon-possessed idiots. And they'll go, oh, no, no, that ain't true, that ain't true. And they'll just scream on top of their lungs. And they're going to keep yelling out Galatians 3 and Romans 9. Galatians 3 and Romans 9. And if you don't hear those two verses from them, I guarantee you're going to hear Matthew 24 from them instead. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are just going to yell those three verses. And pretty soon you're going to memorize those three verses. <laughs> So let's go right here at Romans, uh, Galatians 3 first. What does it say? It says that uh, we are the true nation of Israel, not the physical nation. Why is that? Because on verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So notice it's not the physical nation of Israel. Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So God's covenant with Abraham is not for his physical Jews. That's what replacement theology will argue. It's going for the people who received it by faith, like Abraham, they're going to argue. We're going to look at verse 16. This is their favorite verse. John 3.16. No, Galatians 3.16. That's their verse, okay? It's John 3.16. They're going to scream out loud, Galatians 3.16, not John. All right. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of money, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now, did you see that? So they argue right here, there's no such thing that Abraham has a physical nation, Jews, and spiritual nation, Christians. No, it's only one seed. That's what they're going to insist. One seed, no matter what. But let's keep reading right here. Verse 17, And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So this promise to Abraham, it's not going to get rid of it, the law. Verse 18, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is of no more promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Uh, let's see right here, verse... 22, but the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith, remember, the promise he gave to Abraham once he received it by faith, the promises that he gave to Abraham, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that who? Believe. See that? Now let's keep reading right here. Verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek. See, it has nothing to do with physical nation, they'll argue. Abraham's covenant that he received had nothing to do with the physical Jews, they're going to argue. It's spiritual. 
Uh, verse 29, and if ye be Christ, so if you receive Jesus Christ for your salvation, then are ye what? Abraham's seed. And what? Heirs according to the promise. So this proves undoubtedly, this is the rock solid fact, no matter what, that you cannot put physical Israel right here. This has to be the church, Christian church, who received Jesus Christ for salvation by faith. That's what they're going to insist and argue. So a physical nation absolutely has no part in this whatsoever. You see that? It cannot have any part on that one. I think also as well, if you keep reading over here, um, in verse 6 of Galatians chapter 3, verse 6, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the what? Children of Abraham. So this is undoubtable proof right here that it should be done through faith. It has nothing to do with a physical seed, they're going to argue. Uh, their other favorite verse is Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. And then they're going to read right here. From verses 22 through 31. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. So see, it has nothing to do with the flesh here. It has to do with the promise. Thus, flesh, physical nation of Israel, does not count, they're going to argue. And then if you read 24, 25, 26... 27, 28, that proves that this has to do with not physical, fleshy Jews, but spiritual. Let's start at verse 28 to make it more clear. Now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. So that's their argument. See, those that are born after the flesh persecute the ones who are born after the spirit. That's our argument. So it has nothing to do with the physical nation of Israel, but spiritual. Now, this is so weird. They, they go for, as far to say that, uh, verse 30 and 31, that son of Hagar. Okay, so let me ask you guys a question. People at Sunday school class should know this, okay? Isaac's seed is the nation of Israel, right? We all know that, right? His children. What was Ishmael's seed? Who are they today? Uh, the Arabs, right? Uh, you're wrong! They're Jews! Wait, 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 what? Wait, are you wrong, Pat? Wait. <laughs> they say that this is not referring to Muslims or Arabs. They're saying Ishmael is not the father of the Arabs or the Muslims. Now, the Muslims actually disagree with them. They say, no, Ishmael is our father. Yeah, so I don't know what they're talking about, man. You might say, why are they so Lulu, Pastor? Because they say right here, Verse 29, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. So think about this. Who is the people born after the flesh that were persecuting those who were born after the spirit? Christians. It was during Paul's time, who? The Jews. So they argue here that Hagar, Ishmael, has to be the fleshy seed of Israel. And it cannot be Isaac. We're the ones who are born out of Isaac. Now that is rat a tat 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 blah, 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 that yeah. you <laughs> kids know that's even dumb at Sunday school class. Okay, the simple Okay, did you read verse 24? Did you read verse 24? Which things are and what? Uh, allegory, right? At verse 24? Yeah. Yeah. Which things are an allegory? Do you believe in taking that Bible as it says? He's giving you an allegory of Ishmael's seed and Isaac's seed, okay? Duh! Oh my goodness, duh! So when Paul is explaining from this example here about uh, those born after the flesh persecuting the Christians, he's only using that as an allegorical sense, not literally. It's an allegorical sense to explain it as an explanation. That's their problem. That is the most ridiculous, dumbest argument, and you wouldn't believe who teaches this. This is only a strange little fringe of weirdo cult pastors 
who will claim, I am the new IFB, and I, we believe in replacement theology. Blah, 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 blah. These guys are weirdos, man. Weird, man. I, I never heard of such a strange teaching like that. Then they'll jump. These guys will jump to 1 Thessalonians 2, where it talks about that the Jews have persecuted the Christians. And then they'll go through other verses about Jews persecuting the Christians. Yeah, but this is an allegory for crying out loud, okay? This is an allegory, okay? This is really dumb, okay? You don't want to fall for that, okay? Now, notice that Paul, this is a very simple explanation. You know what the easy fault to that is? This is based upon what, folks? Right? Look back at Galatians 3. This is totally destroyed, okay? I, I used only one verse to demolish Galatians 4. I'm going to only use one verse to demolish Galatians 3 here. You ready for this? Verse 23. But what? Before faith came, we were kept what? Under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should what? Afterwards be revealed. Okay, here's their problem right here. They got a problem right here. Okay, so... We see right here the law, and then we see right here faith. Now, Paul mentioned at Galatians 3, read it, don't believe what I'm saying, read it, please. Before the law was who? Abraham, right? Paul is bringing up an example, an instance of Abraham, where he was saved by faith. The law didn't happen yet, okay? So Paul is saying right here that the church, when they are saved by faith, Right? Galatians 3, is that what it says? If you accept the faith, then you become what? Children of Abraham, because you received it by faith, right? But here's the problem then, okay? Faith wasn't available for like what? How many thousands of years, huh? Yeah. So are you saying then that for more than a thousand years, people went to hell without faith? What are you going to do? God's people did not exist under the law then? What, there was a time gap from Abraham? Boop. Okay, we jump all the way ahead to the church. No, what happened? God, there was a group of people called Jews, and they abided by the law, keeping the Sabbath. They lived in a nation. They were a physical group of people. They kept the law, and God considered them his people that time. You can't deny still a physical nation of Israel. There is no doubt about that. You cannot deny it no matter what. You got more than a thousand years of evidence for that. They could not start that until after Jesus died on the cross. What are you saying then? Until after Jesus died on the cross, God finally had his people, his nation going then? What happened before then? See, this is a simple fallacy, a simple fallacy right here. So you know what it points out right here? There is still no doubt two groups right here. A physical nation and a what? Spiritual nation. Well, Paul said it's not after the flesh. It's not after the flesh. Yeah, do you know why? Do you know why? This is so dumb. Is this law or is this faith? This is faith, right? Does that mean we're under the law today? No. This has no availability today. Back then it was, though. Okay, that's why we believe the nation of Israel, they're temporarily, right? Temporarily put aside. They're temporarily, they're temporarily cast off, and then God is focusing on this group, and it's a spiritual nation, not physical. You still can't deny that in the Bible there are still two different groups of people. Now, if you don't believe there are two different groups of people, I would like to ask you this question then, huh? If you don't believe there are two groups of people, who did God have to cast off then, huh? Mm -hmm. Cast off means you are once my people, but I cast you off. Who did he cast off if not the, the church? Who did he cast off then? See, you still have to have what? Two groups of nations here. A spiritual nation and a physical nation. Duh. All right? Now, here's another one right here. Let's look at Romans 9. 
By the way, didn't you know Paul even said that these were still Jews, Abraham's seed under the law? Didn't you know he said that? Ooh. Let me look, uh, look at right here, okay, if you don't believe me. Uh, verse 6. This is their favorite verse. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not is, uh, all Israel which are of Israel. Oh, you see that? Not all the Jews are actually really Jews. Why? Because they're not saved by faith, they'll argue. Verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Oops. See, these Jews are not the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? But in Isaac shall I seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. So notice right here, it has nothing to do, verse 8, the children of the flesh. See that? Flesh is not the issue here. They're not Abraham's seed. It's the children of the promise that are counted for the seed. And they are counted with their father Isaac. So that's their evidence right here. One, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. So Paul's saying my people, my kinsmen according to the what? Flesh, children of the flesh, not spiritual. Oh, no, these are spiritual Jews. No, he said a curse, damned from Christ, for, from my brethren in the flesh. So these were not saved people. These were damned lost people, okay, according to the flesh. Colon, according to the flesh, colon, who are what? Present tense, Israelites. But then at verse 6, he's saying right here, but that's not the real Israel. Why? Because I'm spiritual Israel is what God is looking at right here. So you know what Paul is arguing right here? What Paul is arguing right here is still, nevertheless, there are still two Israelites, two groups of Jews, one who's a physical nation and one who's a spiritual nation. Well, these physical Jews, they are not considered real Jews today. They do not have God's election and promises today. No, look at verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the what? Adoption. They're still children of God. And the glory and the covenants and the giving of the what? Law. Not faith here. Law. And the service of God and the what? Promises. They still have the promises. Whose are the what? Fathers. And of whom as concerning the who? Flesh. Christ came. Who is over all God bless forever. Amen. Now look at that. How can they easily overlook that? They always like to overlook things. That's their problem. They always like to overlook things, jump into rash conclusions, and make up a doctrine that they don't even know what they're talking about. These guys are just jokers. And they act like they know a lot of Bible, but they actually know zilch yeah. about the Word of God. These people are something else, man. These guys are something else. They are very funny. Now, here's another thing is that if you look at Romans chapter 4, Romans 4, yeah. let's continue on right here. So see, the law is still connected to physical Jews in their very own proof text. Did we, didn't we? In both of them, right? We saw in both of them in their very own proof text. You gotta be blinder than a bat not to see that. Now, Pastor, why are you just banging on these guys? You know why I'm banging on these guys right here? Because what they want you to do, these people, they will act like they're true Bible believers and deceive people. And I told you before that I do not hesitate to really go hard on pastors who teach wrong doctrine because that is such a high responsibility and a position where you're responsible for people's souls. Now let's look at, so we looked at Romans 9, and then let's look at Romans 4. This is our other proof text right here. Now the funny thing is that Galatians 4 and Galatians 3, they're wrong. Romans 9 and Romans 4, they're wrong, all right? We're going to look at Romans 4 here. Verse, yeah, see, you can find it. You can be, you can be replacement theology easily, okay? Look at verse 10. 
Okay. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Non-circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the what? Faith. See, again, it's faith, not law. Uh, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that who? Believe. See, only those who believed in Jesus Christ, who had faith in Jesus Christ. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision, uh, let's see right here, blah, blah, blah. Let's skip that one. We want to go to their proof text. Because I'm accidentally reading my proof text I'm showing you. <laughs> so let's jump to verse 13. I want to be fair to them. Verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the what? Law. But through the what? Righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. So you'll notice right here that this promise is applied only to those who are saved by grace, not by the law. It is a spiritual thing, not a physical thing like circumcision. So that's what they're arguing right here. So it has nothing to do with the physical nation of Israel. Now the funny thing is this. Paul, what he's focusing on again is that he's trying to focus that right now what God is dealing with is a spiritual nation. That's God's focus, not being a physical Jew going by the law. That's the reason why Paul's saying it has nothing to do with this anymore. They were what? Cast off, meaning there is a physical nation of Israel, okay? So... You'll see right here, it still doesn't change the fact, there is a physical nation of Israel somewhere in the blue, somewhere. Uh, if you don't have that physical nation of Israel, oh, let me add this. If you don't believe in a physical nation of Israel as God's people, you cannot even believe in replacement theology because you can't replace anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, that's real. <laughs> cuckoo, cuckoo. Okay, anyway, Romans 4, okay? Now, I skimmed through this. Verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he hath yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them what? Also. Oh! Yeah. Can you guess what that means? Or do I have to interpret it for you? Some of you replacement theology people don't want to admit that, right? Meaning, there's another group over here. <laughs> Why? Because, verse 12, and the father of circumcision to them. Who's the father of circumcision? Okay? The Jews, right? The physical nation of Israel. Father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision what? Oh, oh so he's a father to circumcise people too, that means. Oh, but who also, see that? Also, he's another one. Walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet being uncircumcised. See, Abraham, he's a father of not only physical nation of Israel, but also the people who believe in Jesus Christ by faith. You can't still deny two groups of people. Yeah. You do not believe in replacement theology. You're lying if you say you do. You do not believe in that. You do believe in two different groups of people. Physical nation of Israel, spiritual nation of Jews. Otherwise, you wouldn't believe we replace somebody. Now, let's keep reading right here. You'll notice, uh, oh, this just gets better. I told you. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh wrath, for there, where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the what? <gasps> but to that what? Also, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the what? Father of us who? Oh, oh boom. So Paul admitted right here, there's a physical nation of Israel who are of the law, and then those who are God's chosen people by faith. You can't deny that. Boom, boom, and boom. So you can't, so you can't believe in replacement theology. It's ridiculous. In their very own proof text, it just admitted there are two groups of people that God has. 
So you can't believe in replacement theology. So when they eagerly act like little giddy school children sucking, uh, can't wait to suck on their lollipops, showing you Galatians 3 and Romans 9, then they'll add Romans 4 and Galatians 4 as a bonus. You show them the verses that they skipped or that they just skimmed through quickly so that you people who are not really studying the scriptures can overlook that. That's what they're betting on. You don't want to be the person that sk quickly skims through the scripture, amen? You want to look at that verse, and I went through it, and hey, if you still don't believe me after this, don't believe me. Look at your Bible, please. All right? Amen.